Hello guys and welcome back to the bench and today we're going to be going over Mr. Hobby Aqueous Gundam Colors and uh, before we get into the lineup which is right there in front of us today's video is brought to you by Orden Ogan that's right O-R-D-E-N-O-G-A-N it's a German power metal band I had these out today too and um, phenomenal band uh, they take it, the guy, they take their music seriously, and uh, it's really great. A lot of storytelling, uh, a little bit of folk elements thrown in there, and um, these guys are they're just terrific. Um, if you like some of my other recommendations, then you guys, uh, this is Gunman, uh, you guys will love this stuff. Uh, look them up, a lot of tracks, and they got they do a lot of videos, so good production videos too. Check them out. You can look here on YouTube. Just type in Orden Ogan, and. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Anyway, that's what I happen to be listening to. Now, a little bit of an update before we get into these. On the uh, white paint test, what I've been doing is I've been painting by hand, and I labeled all the colors. And there's a lot here, over 40. And I'm brushing over black, and then we're going to airbrush over black on the other side to see how the white covers the best. And then um, I got this idea of getting these rubber molds. These are rock molds. And what I did was I got this resin and I dyed the resin with this uh, resin dye black and that's how I'm getting these black stones and um, it takes a while to get through it so I'm, I'm gonna cast I got two of them so it won't take as long I'm casting all these stones and we're gonna see how when I brush them on it covers the white covers the crevices that's something else I want to test so we're gonna test everything we can because um, I don't build miniatures. These are little Gundam Converge kits. You just build them out of the box and stick them. Uh, I just want them for a little, you know, desk fodder. That's what those are. But I don't build miniatures, and um, I think a lot of people are, will want to know how the white performs on miniatures. So these crevices on these rocks, I think, are going to be a good test. So that's why I figured I'd cast it. And the reason why uh, the test hasn't come through is I ordered a bunch of colors. Now, most came in today. I didn't have this in white. I didn't have this in white. Um, Mr. Let me see. I also have my G paint in white, which finally came in. The G paint came in and um, the whitest white. You guys know that brand. I think it's, uh, it's a Culture Hustle. It's Culture Hustle. So I'm waiting for that to come in. And that one I paid for extra fast shipping and it never showed up. And now I get a letter. It's coming in three to five days. So. Uh, we'll do this test. If it takes any longer, I'm going on without it. Um, the hell with it. I'm not going to wait for that. Maybe I'll do a separate video on it. But uh, for now, I got all the paints in. Everything came in. Here's the G paint. So I have uh, almost every color I would want to test without going crazy and getting inks and all that stuff. I'm, just, I'm sticking with most hobby brands is what we're doing here. And um, that's what we're going to do. Now, um, as far as these go, let's go over them now. Uh, number one, Gundam White. Uh, we got these out of order. Number two, Gundam Blue. And now it says, if you, I don't know if you can see it. RX, it's not, it's not, uh, let's see if we can pan in. There, see it? RX 78, oh, it won't focus. RX 78 Gundam Blue. All right. RX 78 Gundam Yellow. So these are all based on the RX 78 so far. All right, RX-78, Gundam Red. Now here we go, here's different. Huh, pink for Charonzable. Pink, oh wait, red for Charonzable. Uh, Phantom Gray, so I guess we can use this for any inner frames. Uh, Titan Blue, number one. And Titan Blue, two. And that's the lineup. So I guess these are based on the original Gundam series. And uh, that's what they're starting with. Now this is the whole nine I think they've released. Let me get the camera back, guys. I think this is the initial nine they released. That's why there's only nine here. I got every one I could get. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to brush 
a couple on and we're going to airbrush them on the same piece and we're going to see the difference. What I'm going to do is an RX-78, two even, it's the exact one. So I got a bunch of these entry grade kits just for testing. Here's the, oh, they're right on top, here's the piece. All right, let me get this out of the way. What we're going to do here is we cut this open off camera. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to take these identical pieces right here. Sorry, guys, we're doing this in real time. We're gonna, I'm going to airbrush one and brush one the same color, and I'll do it on two of them. So I'll pull these two off. I'll airbrush one and I'll do uh, maybe red, whatever shows up good. We'll do red and a blue, maybe. And that's what we'll do. Um, it's kind of thin. I'll show you the jar. I don't think I need to thin it to brush it. I usually add a little thinner, but it, it seems pretty thin. Not quite thin enough to airbrush. I don't have to thin it a lot like a lacquer, but uh, you'll see what I mean. It's pretty thin. So, um, and these are entry grades. I don't even think we have to, uh, yep, these, these pop right off. Because we're not building it, I'm not going to sand the edges here. So we'll pick one for red and one for blue. And we'll see the difference when they're dry if you guys are going to brush paint this stuff. There we go. Look at that. All ready to go. You get this out of the way. All right. That's what we're going to do. I'll put one on my uh, sticks there and one I will brush here. I'll brush one on camera. Now, this happened to have just come in today. Check this out. A Mr. Brush from Mr. Hobby. And you know what? This is a nice brush. I mean, I haven't tried it yet. But it's got a, silico a fat silicone handle. Very comfortable. And uh, I was looking for a broad um, tip like this. Because uh, I, when I paint on camera, I like to uh, cover a lot of... You know, right away, I'm not doing any fine details. I just want to see how these things, you know, brush on for you guys quick. Because we're just testing here. And um, so this is going to be a maiden voyage for this brush, which I absolutely love. Just brought it before even using it. It's a synthetic bristles on the end. Um, and it says don't get too much. It's solvent resistant, but don't let this soak in the solvent. But I don't. I just, you see my tip with the Q-tip. Not the Q-tip. The clothespin. I hang it into the thinner, so... That's not, not going to be a problem. Now, I primed the spoons. We went all aqueous here. So, we got aqueous white and aqueous gray. I did most of the spray can, and then I did a bunch of the white. I actually used um, their primer. And then, as a bonus to try, I want to try a different primer. I want to try my Mecca Empire white primer. So, that's this one, and I put ME Prime on the back so we know. Um, that said, I wasn't crazy about the performance, either airbrushed or spray painted, their primer. It kind of pulled on the end, and it drove me nuts. See it? And mine didn't do that. And um, others don't do it either. I just happen to have mine, but you can see the difference of the pooling. See it? See the white line? And let me tell you something. I took my time. And it started happening a lot, and then I let it dry and came back and put another coat, and it still pulled on the end. And I let it go, because I think these colors are going to cover this anyway, and I tried to sand one down, and it didn't quite work. But I haven't fully experimented with this yet, but the spray can and the airbrush kind of perform the same way. And um, But mine didn't, and uh, many of the other ones I, primers I use don't do that. So that is something to notice. But anyway... I digress. The, the gray is perfect. It's just the white. Look at the gray. All right. Okay, guys. Let me get some stuff out of the way. We're going to use... Oh, these are the greatest cups in the world. You guys have to use these cups. Um, let me get a bunch here. We're going to spray all these on camera because I have every color. We might as well. But I like these cups because there's no nubs on the bottom. Some of these have these nubs and you go to stare and, you, and the steering stick catches on the nub and it flicks the paint everywhere. And then I, once I found this brand that has no nubs in the bottom, man, I bought them. I got like two, uh, two gross there over there. I bought a couple gross. And they're cheap, and I keep them on the bench at all times. I love them. And uh, oh, that's on a side note. Anyway, let me pause this camera and let me get out some uh, mixing uh, materials here. And we're going to uh, brush paint. Oops, hit the camera. We're going to brush two of these on now. And then we're going to head over to the bench, to the new booth, and we're going to spray for the first time on camera in the new booth. And I got some stuff to show you on the new booth, too. A uh, couple updates there. So uh, let me pause the camera and uh, get this done. 
All right, guys, let me show you what I mean by how thin this stuff is in the jar. See it? Look at that. It just pours right off. No droplets, and even when it drops, it's the very tail end of pouring in. See it? So um, I'm not going to thin this any further for brushing. Uh, I am going to put about 30%, 70-30 when we thin it to airbrush. And for that, going to use Mr. Hobby's leveling thinner and uh, or you can use my Mecha Empire thinner which is also a leveling thinner they both work perfect for this but let's go ahead with our brand new Mr. Hobby brush Mr. Brush everything's Mr. right so we're going to brush this let it dry and then we're going to uh, airbrush the same piece we'll put them side by side in the very end and see how it works so the brush loads really nice look at that All right, we can kind of load this up because we're going to pipe this whole thing. Now, I don't know. I believe these dry semi-gloss, I believe. I should have the power metal going now. Oh, for the record, guys, the booth is running. The new, the new spray booth is running. I no longer have to uh, turn it on or off and find a special volume level for the booth for when I'm recording because the new booth is more powerful and more quiet isn't that awesome so I'll show you what I mean by updates on the booth too as soon as we're done here just trying to cover most of this huh the best we can I just wanted to see how it matches when it dries I'll put this in the dehydrator and uh, let it dry while we're airbrushing so everything will come out at the same time I'm even going to uh, I'll put the ones I airbrushed too in the dehydrator. Just try and fill everything in. We'll see how it air dries if it levels and uh, levels itself off nice. It does brush really nice. I gotta say, it's tough to do. My new camera setup is. Uh, a little different it's sitting right between me the camera I'm not gonna go crazy here but it does seem to cover itself nice let's go over it that's sometimes a sticky point with paint when you go over it again it pulls no it goes on nice all right yeah it goes on really nice but I believe this dries in a semi gloss but we'll find out all right there's the red look at that all right, we cover that good. We'll let this dry. Um, I will brush the blue on. I guess we'll do a bright blue. That'll show up good on camera. And then the counterparts will be airbrushed. We'll hold them up at the end of the video. Let me wash off my brush and some lacquer thinner. And I'll meet you at the booth, and I'll show you what I mean by some updates at the booth. All right, guys, here we are at the booth. And uh, here is the shelf that I didn't have attached before. And uh, the reason for the shelf is this is where you airbrush. People are worried what will fit into the booth itself. And um, I get asked as far as height-wise goes because it looked like that was pretty low. But you're not spraying in here. You're spraying out here. And this sucks everything right in the way it's designed. So I had to rearrange everything. I'm still not quite ready. I'm waiting for some new lighting to come in. I have my BenQ light right there. So I can get the proper lighting for you guys while I'm working on it. Um, now, when I'm not on camera, I use these hobby pads. I showed you. You peel them off, and they I leave them in there, and I have them out, come out all the way out to here um, to keep everything clean. I got these magnets. See them? And boom, holds everything down perfect. And uh, that's two pads spread out. Now, on camera, I use the black paper. I'll show you that in one second. But here is the second thing that happens. Here we go. I got, uh, I eliminated the uh, secondary exhaust fan that I had because my other booth was weak. This one is not weak. So um, it, it just pretty much interferes. You don't want to add anything in between. I pointed at it the last time, but I actually never even hooked it up to this. So I just uh, removed it. You can see the mount to the old one behind it. It just attached it straight into this booth. And uh, you can see it's right against the wall now. See it? There's the spoons we're going to be spraying with. 
I'm hooked over here. So, and I got this shelf, I had to rearrange it so I could put all new paints on there because I need room for more paint. Of course I do. And all my airbrush holders are here. Anyway, that's, um, that is the update as far as that goes from the build. Here's the nice shelf. So we are painting way out here. If you can see, it's, it's much further out. There we go. See it? Because the top of the booth is way in and here's the base. So you need the shelf, which, uh, it's pretty convenient because, like I said, I got my new magnetic, my new, my old magnetic mounts, but I couldn't use them. Nothing was magnetic. Boom, they cling right to this. Now, I'm going to buy a few more. I can keep all my brushes here. Let me put this tripod down and show you. Sorry, guys. Everybody's getting seasick out there. And show you uh, what I do on camera is I like to use black cardboard. It's, it's non-reflective. So I'm going to push this all the way in. Here, one more piece. We'll move him over. Matter of fact, this will probably hold it on in place, right? Yeah. So that magnet will hold. I keep extra magnets here. It came with a couple. Huh. That'll hold us down there. Let's put one on the other side. Now, on camera, it's nice and anti-reflective. I might even block it all off, you know, as I get going here. But uh, I have a different mount for the camera here that I'm going to be aiming in. Not quite fully ready yet. I'm waiting for a product to come in tomorrow. Uh, one of those soft umbrella lights. I'm going to hang over the booth. So I don't have to keep moving this BenQ back and forth. I wasn't prepared. It was really shady. And not proper looking. That's why it took me a day or two to get this set up. For the video. But anyway. Let me pause this. I'll put this in the mount. And we're going to start airbrushing. The Aqueous Gundam Paints. Alright guys. Um, I'll show you the uh, consistency we got here. This is about. You can do 60-40. Six drops paint four drops thinner if you want to go a little thicker if you have a fatter needle go uh, 70 70 30 go 70 percent paint 30 30 percent thinner and with this you just drag it on the side and if you're leaving a nice coating as it runs down see it? that's a good consistency does the old skim milk um, logic works here too looks like skim milk we're gonna try different airbrushes with this let's go ahead with my evolution my uh, Potter and Steinbeck, and uh, we'll see how that works. I'm at 20 PSI, and uh, let's go ahead and blow this off. I have a dedicated blower coming. Instead of using the airbrush, that's coming uh, in the mail tomorrow. Oh, it really likes this airbrush. It's going on nice. First coating looks good. Let us go ahead and uh, spray a spoon. Let's try and layer this on thick. See how it sprays. I'm curious. It should go on like a lacquer does. Yeah, it does. It goes on nice. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it goes on nice. All right, so that tells me that's a primer, though. We're going to see how it works on this plastic. But I think I think uh, looks like two coats will work. Look at that! It just goes on beautiful. We'll go over it at the bench. Don't get the camera quite at the angle or the lens. Uh, focus and zooming in just how I want it but let's try this on plastic directly a spoon besides the uh, gumpla piece here we go I got some spoons from the deli my local deli thank you Amanda thank you Tony here we go and Mario we'll see how it acts over bare plastic Oh, it goes on really nice. Well, we'll see how durable it is. And that's it. Beautiful. Look at that. It is even. There's no orange peel. 
really, really good. Oh, this is great. All right, I'll put these in the uh, dehydrator. Let me clean out the brush, grab another color. Maybe I'll grab another airbrush. I'll be right back. All right, guys, here we go. Blue. Put on the gumpla piece and a spoon. Uh, I'll show you the consistency again. It's right there. This blue seemed a little thin. This was like a... This was a 70-30 job right here. Uh, we're going with my Iowata Eclipse. And I think the air is a little high. Let me lower it down a bit. There we go. I can get a little closer with less air, you know? Alright, we'll go with a second coat. Let's go on my white spoon. This is the primer. It's a big area, so this needle is a little small for larger areas. It's not bad. You'd have to thin it a little more and turn up the air a little more to get uh, a greater coverage quicker, I think. However, it does look good. That is a pure blue. Oh, I see a little shading there. All right, let's go in. My compressor makes more noise in the booth now. That is a quiet booth, huh, guys? I love this thing. Pace. Spray booth. Handmade to order. All right. Look at that. Looks like it's molded blue, doesn't it? Look at that. I don't know if I got to zoom in more. Let's see. Like I said, I'm still working on the angles here. That's better. Look at that. All right. All right, guys. Let me clean the brush out. Put these in the dehydrator. Move on to the next color. All right, guys. Next up, I'm going to try my uh, GSI Creos PS270. This has got a 0.3 millimeter needle in it. This is the white. Because the white's going to be hard to see on camera, we'll put it over the gray spoon. We're just going to put it over the gray spoon for the full test. So here we go. Yeah, it's such a tough color to see on camera, particularly over white. Now, this isn't quite white. Um, it's an off-white kind of, it's, it's a grayish white. But you know the color the Gundams are, they have that almost greenish hue to them. I, I thought that's the color they would have gone for. Being a white, it's a little harder to get on here. Let's see if I can turn the air up on this. No, it's going pretty good. This is why we're doing the white test, to see who has the best white. No, it's covered pretty good. You will... Oh. Make sure we get the lighting right. We'll show you on camera uh, at the bench so the lighting's a little better. But anyway, it went on pretty good. All right, let me clean out this brush. Move on to the next color. All right, next up, let's try the uh, Badger Patriot 105. It's the blue, which is a 0 0.5, I think it's a 0 0.55 millimeter needle. Going with the yellow. This went with a 60-40 on this one. Six drops of paint, four drops of thinner. We'll try my Mecha Empire primer and see how it goes over that. Here we go. Oh, it goes on nice. Well, it likes the... It likes the Badger airbrush. 
It goes on nice. Look at that. Right on. One cover. One coat, I should say. Alright, let's try it with some bare plastic. I still got some in the cup. Let's check it out. Uh, this being the uh, Badger Patriot, uh, that's 15 PSI is all it calls for. A little thicker, you can go up to 18. It's a very low pressure airbrush. It doesn't need a lot of air pressure. It's uh, part of the design. The new booth is great. I could see everything going up. It's quiet. Leaving me a lot more room. The camera doesn't show it. How much room I actually have. Let's go another coat on this too. Let's go another coat. Beautiful. Wow. I know the spoon is different, so I'll know which one is the one without the primer. And, um... Awesome. Wow, that went on really nice. All right. Um, let me clean this out. Grab another color. All right, guys. Moving on. Number five. Pink for Charonzable. Charonzable's pink. So much bigger. I'm used to having the char a little closer to me. This one, we're going to go with my Grex. Makes a lot of noise. Makes as much noise as the fan. But I do like this hairbrush. It's comfortable, too. Look at that. She's on. All right. Why, uh, why dwaddle? Move on to the next color. Boy, that covered good. All right, let me clean this out. Move on. All right. Oop. All right, guys, here we go. This is number six, red for Char Hansible. We use the same airbrush. I cleaned it out quick. Uh, I thinned this one 50-50. I want to see if there's a difference. Um, thinning it even more like, uh, like a true lacquer, a pure lacquer. So let's see how this works. No, nah, it goes on. It goes on good. Just like a lacquer. I mean, it, technically it's a lacquer. It's an acrylic-based lacquer. Look at that. That is one and done. Look at that. Perfect. Very good paint. I'm impressed. I want to let you guys know, almost no smell. I don't smell anything. Now, part of it's the nice booth, but um, I smelled the jar when I got it, and uh, it's it's pretty weak. It's, it doesn't have a strong smell, which is a big plus bonus for these. Um, really impressed so far with this lineup. Uh, let's get to the rest of the colors and we're almost done. All right, guys, next up is Phantom Gray. Now, the grays are very close uh, in color, particularly on camera. So I will spray this one on camera. The other one I'll do off camera. Save me about uh, four minutes here of uh, video footage. But I will show the results at the end. It's like... Uh, you look like I'm spraying the same thing. But anyway, I'll stick with this Grex airbrush to the bitter end. As we are laying this paint down quick with this baby. Look at that. That's a beautiful neutral gray. Oh, that is nice. Look at the reflection. Even though I think it's going to dry semi-gloss. Really? Wow, that's terrific. Well, this uh, airbrush makes quick work of it. It lays it down really quick and nice. All right, guys, let me clean this out. Move on to the last color. All right, last one on camera will be number nine, Titan Blue. Here we go. There's stuff on this. Yeah, yeah let's go ahead. Yeah, see it? The spots on the... Well, you can't see it on camera. Let me use a different spoon. Hold on, guys. I'm going with a different spoon. It looked like something ended up on that spoon. Sorry, I'm out of microphone distance here. Let's put it over this white spoon instead. But I really got the exact color, that Titan Blue. Wow. 
they nailed that color, that's for sure. Fantastic. All right. All right, guys. Let me clean out the brush, gather all of them up, and I'll show you them all in, at the bench, and we'll go over the colors, and we'll check the durability, too. All right, guys. Here we are back at the bench with the results. And uh, let's go over them. Here is the white. This was sprayed over a gray primer, and it's kind of an off-white. Hard to tell on camera. Uh, you can, it looks kind of gray for my eyes here. Um, but very smooth. It, it dried matte. It's almost satin like I thought they did. Now we're going to go over durability in one second. I'll show you the color I did earlier. I let it sit for a couple hours. But here's the red. That's red over the white primer. Their, right, their white primer. Which I'm not crazy about. But it went on really nice. It matches the, the cap perfectly. Fantastic. I want to test it over white plastic. There's over the uh, suit spoons I got from the deli. And uh, pretty nice. It's stuck. And um, it's pretty durable. I don't know yet because it's not sitting as long as one of the other ones I tested. But you're not going to get the same durability as you would over a primer. That's for sure. It's just how it is. However, here's the test. Here is brushed and airbrushed. All right, here we go. This is the airbrushed piece, and it is fantastic. It just looks like it's molded in that color. A little shinier, you would think, anyway. And here is the brushed-on piece. Uh, not bad, a little uneven, but I think I'd put on a quick coat. I think a, a second thin coat might do you well. Let's hold them up together. All right, on the right is the brushed-on, the left is the airbrushed. So, not bad. More of a glossy look on the brushed. But in person, there's no comparison. The I'm trying to get the light to hit it. The uh, airbrush one is just flawless. But for small pieces, it will airbrush on. It looks a little different in color, too. It's a little denser looking, but uh, you, know, you saw me pour it on there. I think if you thinned it anymore, though, you might not get the same results. Maybe a retarder in it would help. So that's that. Now I did the same with the blue, so we'll check that right now. Here is the blue. This is over white. Their white primer. A beautiful blue. It's a semi-gloss. Absolutely perfect. And let's check the brushed and airbrushed. Alright, here is airbrushed. A little weak on the edges. The pigment wasn't as great in this as it is in the red. See it? And here is the brushed. It's a little blotchy. Didn't brush on as good as the red. Here they are side by side. Not bad. Big area. I mean, I, I, I personally hand brush smaller pieces, like the size of this circle I would brush. I would never, I personally would never brush a big piece like this, but that's me. Some guys can only hand brush. All right, yellow. This is over primer. A beautifully perfect neutral yellow. Boy, it is smooth. If you, it, it, it doesn't have that matte feeling to it at all. It's really smooth. It's pretty durable, too. This is over white plastic. And it went on the white plastic pretty good. I know it, it'll scratch off the plastic. Yeah. So it really, really benefits well from having a, a primer. All right. Here is Char's Pink. That is exactly it. That is the exact colors of the Char Unzible. <laughs> the Zaku, isn't it? That is, they got it perfect, man. All right, here is the durability one. This one I sprayed earlier. So let's go ahead and get some tape. There we go. Everything's out of reach, guys, sorry. That piece of Tamiya tape, huh? All right. They don't make a dispenser for this giant piece, that's for sure. I keep my tape in drawers like that so uh, 
doesn't get any dust on it. This is Hobby Mio uh, nipper we're going to be testing soon. All right. There's a piece of tape. That's for masking my bigger cars. There we go. Pushing it on there. Ah, the tape ripped before it took the paint off. Yeah, it's super, super durable, particularly, of course, over primer. So uh, it's a durable paint. Beautiful color. Now this is over the white primer. And this is just over this gray spoon. I want to see the difference in color. And you can see there's a difference in color right there, baby. Look at that. That would make a good kit in itself for two shades. Look at that. Wow. Um, now, <laughs> here's my opinion. I would pick one of these two colors. I personally wouldn't buy them both. Uh, I had no idea. I bought them all for the lineup for the test. But this, <laughs> I had to write down that this is 08 and this is 07. Because, boy, they're too close. They should have made one more of a blue tinge or much darker. I guess you can kind of see the darkness difference on top of each other a little bit here. Not like this, that's for sure. So, um, unfortunately, I, I personally would pick one or the other. Because, boy, they are close. And this is the blue. Uh, what is it? Titan Blue number two. This is Titan Blue number one. And that is not blue. Does it say blue on it? Yes, it does. Yeah, really nice neutral color. Let's look at it compared to the other blue. Oh, those are completely different, huh? Look at that. Uh, and that's it. That's the whole lineup as it stands right now. I personally really like these. Um, there's no, there's almost zero smell. For, for some reason, there's no smell. Um... Whereas Tamiya, it's kind of the same. These are like a, a copy of Tamiya. It's a acrylic lacquer. And um, that's who the, that's the market they were going after, that same market. But uh, the, Tamiya has a sweet, strong smell. Whereas these, almost none. Um, there is a little bit of a smell, but there's it's pretty low. I, so I, that's a high bonus for me with this, for uh, you guys looking for something without a smell. Um, let's see which one went over my primer. Can I spray one over? There it is. So this was over the uh, Mecha Empire primer, which went on really nice and even. Um, I want to check the... Yeah, it's the same durability. It doesn't matter. The primer didn't matter. Mine's a lacquer primer, so these are lacquers technically too, so that's the one thing I wanted to check. Anyway, that was it. Uh, great test. They go on. They airbrush beautifully. Uh, I showed you guys I used several airbrushes in the test. It really liked... The going through the Grex and or the Patriot. And uh, it, the Harder and Steinbeck also airbrushed them really well. The others were, were uh, all good. All went through fine. But this really pushed it in a way that it just, you've seen it. It just went on in one layer perfectly. And um, same with the, the badges. So it does like a larger needle. That's for sure. It does like a larger needle. Um, but anyway, it gets my approval. It's a thumbs up. I do like them quite a bit. Uh, they're easy to use. They, they don't smell. They're not too expensive. I think these were $3.99 a jar. I got half of them at Hobby Lobby, and the other half I bought on, uh, on, on an online retailer. Um, somebody has them. I think Spray Gunner has them. My Spray Gunner guys have them. But uh, that's it. That is all. I'm not crazy about their primer. I don't know why. The gray was good. The white's tough, but white primer's tough anyway. You know, it is tough to get a great white primer. However, I'm going to toot my own horn is... is uh, this primer goes on terrific. So does all clads. But uh, keep in mind, you don't have to use their thinner. You can use, well, this is still Mr. Hobby's thinner, but it's not one made for liner. It works great with a lacquer thinner. So this is, this really uh, worked perfect with it. It leveled itself beautifully. They're terrific paints. Uh, anyway, guys, that is it for this test. Uh, coming up, I got this Hobby Mio airbrush, this 0.3 millimeter nozzle. And um, it looks pretty good. Uh, we will be giving it a little bit of a test, and I think it's got a MAC valve and everything. So, uh, does this one have the MAC valve? This one doesn't. The one that's coming in does. But um, I'm interested to see how this does, because some of the Hobby Mio stuff so far has been pretty good. So that test is coming up. The white test is coming up. I'm waiting for one more paint to show up. If it doesn't, then I'm going to go ahead with the test and leave that other paint out of the test. And we'll be. I'm still casting these stones as we speak. And... Um, uh, that's it. 
that's it guys i want you all to have a wonderful weekend i'm going to have a special video tomorrow night a little quickie on an announcement with the uh the giveaway a little hit a little snag with the uh Vallejo paint set giveaway i'm going to be uh calling a new name out and uh that's going to take place tomorrow so uh i'll give you guys a heads up on that anyway guys thanks for sticking around please like the video it helps a tremendous amount subscribe if you haven't already because we have a lot more tests to go as i just showed you just a handful of what's to come and um that's it i want you guys to have a wonderful weekend and um we will see you in the next video